Welcome to Get the Net, a fishing podcast that takes a deep dive into competitive events, fishing news, tips, tactics, and most importantly, interviews with some of the most interesting and in-tuned anglers from Canada to the central U.S. We're leaving no stone unturned to bring you the most raw and authentic talk talk. My name is Jamie Bruce, and while my resume says bass, my frying pan says walleye, I'm no stranger to the multi-species realm. Whether you're puttering on tackle, driving the bus, cutting the grass, or killing time in a 9 to 5, we'll try to give you something in every episode to take with you on the water, or at the very least, bring you a few laughs. Okay, welcome back everyone to Get the Net. We are back in house, big show tonight, a couple more beauties lined up. I don't know what happened to this podcast, but um, we ended up with a uh, pretty mint lineup. Um, really hard to ask for for better guests than we've been getting so pretty happy with that um you know we've got kind of superstars on here the last little bit but uh we're gonna get back to some some local folks soon here and uh you know there's a there's a lot of good people with a lot of good stories that aren't necessarily on on the big stage so uh we haven't lost sight of that but uh if the beauties are gonna line up we're gonna knock them down so uh got Matt Robertson and Pat Renwick with guest appearance from Seth Fider later on. But a couple things we got to touch on here. There's lots been happening in the fishing world. Um, on the Bassmaster Open stage, Buddy Cooper Glant finished third at the Bassmaster Northern Open number two on Lake Oneida. Um, so that's a big deal. Coop's a, a young Canadian. If you haven't been following him, um, you know, dial him up on on social he's doing big things on the on the Bassmaster front he won uh southern open stop two this year uh and has just been killing it in general i think he's second in in aoi points now so uh, as long as he writes the ship this boy's going to the elites so we're gonna we're gonna probably get him on soon he's a buddy uh you know talk to him here and there uh he's got lots going on and uh hopefully hopefully we can steal an hour from him to uh to have a chat and actually his tournament partner back home danny mcgarry uh finished second at the eastern regionals on st lawrence river uh last week so he's going down to the nationals on pickwick um so that's a big big thing for danny he beat up on cooper pretty good at that one so he's got to be happy with that gets to step into the limelight a little and and good job, bud. Maybe we'll uh, we'll try to rile these two up for for an episode here. Get them both on. They both got lots of good stories. And uh, yeah, keep your phone on, boys. And uh, yeah, we're I'm recording this on the Monday after Kenora Walleye Open. We're uh, July 11th, and uh, yeah, I just finished up the my last walleye tournament of the year, uh, and it's a big one too. Big two day on Lake of the Woods, heavy field. Uh, all the walleye hitters are there. Um, yeah, kind of went on a bit of a walleye tear this spring. Um, did the Dryden one and, and this one, and this one is the same scenario. Did, you know, one one full day of pre-fish and a little bit closer to home, so I could sneak out here and there. Yeah, so I hopped in that one with uh, with the boss, Ashley, and uh, we, uh, we had good fishing. I mean, it's Lake of the Woods. It's on fire right now. Uh, we caught most of our fish on plastics, to be honest. So, like, <laughs> any lake you can go do that on, it usually is a pretty good indicator of, of good walleye fishing. Um, tournament was a whack fest all around. Like, we had a 29-incher and a 29 and three-quarter and really nice unders both days and got fourth. <laughs> so it's hard to imagine catching them too much better than that. But uh, Jamie Robertson and his wife, Carolina Robinson, I, did I call him Robertson? Jamie Robinson and Carol Ann Robinson from Wawa uh, dominated. They had almost 31 pounds, had a 30 and a half and a 30 incher, like, and, you know, nice slots, and they just crushed them. Steve Gravel and Kevin Robineau got second. They lit them up too, just under 30 pounds. Paul Jansen and the juice man, Justin Hebert, um, blasted them. They're always, always up there. Uh, Ash and I got fourth, Brennan Walker, Ryan Levesque got fifth, and Mr. Lund down in sixth, Rory Weeb, give him a shout out, and yeah, looks like we can stop right there after that. Um, yeah, good, like, you know, you see these guys down in fifth and sixth, and it's like, oh yeah, had a decent weekend, well, they all caught giant fish, like, you know, probably 29 to 30 inches, um, 
over the weekend it's, it was just such a whack fest that you had to pretty much have the best day of fishing of your life both days to to get it done um but yeah good weekend great event really good payout on the top end um you know hard to beat lund throws in a a 16 foot boat which is you know a pretty heavy piece of currency these days so uh you know really nice of the volunteers to give their time and the kennedys for you know putting this derby on it's uh it's sweet to have a big walleye tournament in kenora um you know especially sweet for us we get to sleep in our own bed and go blast walleyes all day so thanks again to uh to everyone that had a part in that and congratulations to the winners and i do have to give uh when i was talking about on one of the last episodes i was talking about some up-and-comer anglers from dryden and i i missed doc cortens uh congratulations on your 47th this weekend doc told uh, uh told jeff i'd give you a shout out so there it is sorry i didn't mention you before i know you'd won all kinds of stuff and yeah my bad and yeah what else is going on here oh uh did have something crazy happen over the weekend um end of day one it was three it was 326 and we pulled off on our way to weigh-ins, we had to check in at 3.40. Uh, we were probably about six minutes from weigh-in, maybe a little bit less. Um, we pulled off. We had nice fish. We had a, you know, a 28-and-a-half-incher and, and three perfect unders, so we were styling pretty good. And pulled into a spot. I threw up my crusher jig with a net rig, and I cracked a 29-and-three-quarter-inch walleye that was easily over 10 pounds, like super round, magnum. So, you know netted it ashley stabbed it in the head about four times with the bucket um but anyway got it in the net jacked my hook out like from pulling on it so many times and uh yeah measured it logged it and this tournament you just catch weigh release you know take a picture on their bump board and let it go never took another cast like had to go blast away and so that rocketed us up you know from probably 10th up to fourth uh just a big like end of the day thing you never hear about so you know later that night i started thinking about it a little bit i was like i was you know a pretty specific fish in a pretty specific bay you know where i'd caught a big one before and i pulled up my pictures and on july 1st i took ashley and her friend out around town just for an evening of fishing and we had caught in a great big walleye caught it took a quick picture let it go and uh, i looked at the pictures and it was the same fish it ate the same bt quarter ounce two watt crusher jig with the same color mud bug hula stick and uh you know in the it was just in a little sand bay and it had it to itself and that's just where that fish lived so pretty crazy that you know wheel up nine days later and catch that same fish so you know kind of stresses the importance of taking care of fish and uh catch and release obviously works it's not the first time i've seen something like this happen and it, you know just it's really important to take care of these fish like when i had caught it in pre-fish i just lifted it out of the water quick you know pop the jig out just a couple pictures if they're not great who cares you just catch another walleye you can't tell the difference between a 30 inch and a 26 inch in a picture anyway so uh yeah just something to think about if you're pre-fishing just take care of them and it could pay off you know could pay off big for you so pretty that wild. was a pretty wild thing and you know happy it happened uh, there were actually quite a few teams already sitting in the bay, um, you know, waiting to weigh in, checked in the same time as us, came back, uh, from down the lake the same time as us while they were floating in the bay, big dog. And with their 14 bag, we were catching a, you know, a 10 pounder and, and shooting ahead of them. So fish till the very last minute, if you can, cause it pays off big lots. The second day we cut our big one at three o'clock also had to be in at three forty had a 20 minute boat ride so also really pushing it but we're getting hung up on the walleyes a little too long here this is it for walleye fishing for me like i said hopped in a couple of these derbies they're big fun derbies i like the people like the payout like the fishing it's all good but anyway bass fishing season's you know here it opened on july 1st for keeping them so derbies are going to start rolling um we're going to be talking bassing with uh with matt and and pat here right away um you know, just got to shout out BT Fishing again. Uh, not lying over the weekend. Every single fish that we weighed in and caught was on a BT Fishing lure. You know, and it's not stuff that's specifically designed for walleye necessarily. But in the last two tournaments, it's all I've been using. And I'm not just BSing. 
Like, it's legit. We caught a bunch of fish on the crusher jig and hula stick. Look for a couple videos out on that soon. And uh, caught some on the clock shot, too, the old clock attack. She's she's not just for ice fishing, um, you know, and, and I honestly can see the difference. Like, with forward-facing sonar, you can see them, you know, swimming away from you. So if you throw it, if you throw your regular drop shot and, you, you know, you land their tail and they swim away, then that's it. You can maybe bang some rocks and get them back, but... You know, you'll see it in the videos. Like I threw it at a couple where I missed them by 10 or 15 feet and just started hammering that rattle on bottom. And uh, you can see some of them turn on the dime and, and come, eat your, come eat your drop shot. So that's a thing. Crusher jig, smeltinator jig. Ashley caught hers on the 8th ounce one aught camo smeltinator jig. Just a little like leech beauty. She put a leech on it. It's usually like what we put small swim baits on. But anyway, put a leech on that thing, weasel it around the cabbage a little bit, absolute hammer, and you get a good hook. There's very few walleye jigs you can buy that have, like, actual good Gamagatsu hooks and good finish and everything. So check those out, btfishing.com. Use promo code GETTHENET, get you another 10% off. All caps, get the net. Yeah. And one more shout-out to CanBat Batteries. Uh, another problem-free weekend on the batteries. Uh, if anyone saw us fishing out there, they would have seen us driving around like maniacs. I don't, uh, I don't even start my motor to go to the next spot. If I have close dots, then I'm just riding my, uh, riding my trolling motor. Just already there fishing. And yeah, it's just kind of, kind of my style now. And you're not doing that without lithium batteries. So check those out. Canbat.com. Use promo code Bruce five, save you a few bucks there. Couple quick things I missed, uh, you know, as I put this together and prepare to release it. Uh, we didn't touch on Lake Despair Lodge, uh, cast over cast bass tournament, tournament on the Lake Despair chain, two dare, uh, good time run by Bill and Nell Gooden. Uh, congratulations to Jeff Bragg, Ross Steele on first, Jeff Krieger, Braden Krieger second, and Brian Gustafson, Brian White on third. They had a nice big comeback on the last day. Um, fourth, Jody Scheipett. Dale LaBelle and Ryan McDowell, Mike Paduke. Uh, good finish, g- good derby too. Uh, lots of fun. It's it's not a mega field and, you know, it's good fishing and they have it a Friday, Saturday and good party after and I would highly recommend going if you can. Another thing I should mention too before we go any further, uh, you know, in these kind of conversations I'm going to have with some people, there some of the content might, you know, be a little bit rough around the edges here and there. Uh, you know, we, we do our best to keep it clean, but you know, regular conversation that lasts an hour or two. There's, there's a, you know, a slip up once in a while. And, uh, you know, the intent isn't to create a bunch of uncultured garbage, but there's the possibility of some profanity once in a while. So, you know, if you're driving with young kids in the car and listening to this, uh, might not be the best option. Uh, I'll, I'll put a fair warning on, on any of the ones that might have a little bit, uh, and this would be one of them. So fair warning there. The last thing we want to do is, uh, you know, have, a redneck drop a an f bomb in front of a ten year old kid. So heads up there. And one more thing I got to ask before we get into the into the nitty gritty here. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment. To continue doing this, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you need to see growth and building, and you know, we're we're really getting that in our view counts on like, the numbers front. Um, just need some more. Some more engagement. So if you're watching and you're not subscribed, then subscribe, you know, comment anything. Tell your friends, share it on your socials. Uh, we'll run a few giveaways, hook you up for, uh, you know, for helping out. But it's just one of those things, you know, to keep sponsors and and everything like that, um, you know, a, a possibility. It's It's got to happen. And uh, if you do want a piece of the show, then hit me up too. Send me an email, easy to get a hold of. Uh, but anyway... Uh, gonna stop spamming you, and we're gonna get into Onum's Matt Robertson and Stray Cast Pat Renwick. Can you hear us, Bracey? I got you, bud. Is that better? Oh yeah. Can hear that sweet Southern twang, partner. How's this coming on this end? Very Illinoisish. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, boys? Good to have you on the cast here, finally. Yeah, yeah. good to see you, Brucey. What's uh, what's going on on that end? Uh, we're somewhere in Minnesota. We don't even know. Yeah, we're up here in Minnesota at Sess House, and uh, 
Yeah, having to teach them how to fish. Oh. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> more and more, he's trying to teach them. You got to go that way a little bit. Try going, the, yeah, and then I'll come this way. You just got to learn to get closer. Probably. Yes, yes. <laughs> Tell Santa what you want for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're setting it up. <laughs> I want a Red Rider BB gun. <laughs> yeah. So if you're just tuning in uh, via audio, what I'm looking at right now is pretty much uh, Garth Elgar from Wayne's World times two sitting <laughs> on each other. <laughs> Well, and uh, there's some mallards above them and some other yes. ducks there in, in Seth Fighter's basement. Yeah, Seth and Dayton did an amazing job of redecorating the, the basement, as you saw on the last podcast, the last get yeah. to net. Yeah. Yeah, sure did. And uh, Seth mentioned he'd like to, to piss off the front stairs and shoot guns at his house, oh. um, <laughs> but he's still in the suburbs, so... I think you guys sampled that. He may, or? he may or may not have already done that. I mean, we're not gonna. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna say he's done it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I got it's a uh, man got a gorgeous place here. I'll give him. It's that. beautiful. Love this place. The, and the fighters treat us amazingly well every time we yeah. come here. Dayton's a, Dayton's a great hostess. Good meals yeah. and everything, and uh, yeah, I can't thank both of them enough. For, Kids uh, are amazing. For putting up with two numbskulls like yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. We're a bunch of we bicker all the time, me and Matt. We're yeah, we're like you know how the how brothers bicker? Me and Matt always bickering at oh, each yeah. other. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are Dale and Brennan. Yeah. <laughs> so Seth took you out on the pond today or what? Yeah, we, we went to Millilax today. To Millax. Yeah, went and caught some small mouth mm-hmm. and and yeah, man, it was really fun. Went out there and uh, poked around a little bit. Seth caught a real big gator. Uh, oh, that was awesome. Our pickerel. Yeah. And northern. Yeah, big. No, it's pickerel, wasn't it? That was northern. Was it? Oh, whatever. In Kentucky, they're pickerels. And then yeah. south, north of the Mason Dixon line, there's there's pickerels, but there's more northern. Yeah, and all three of us reeled it in. I mean, yeah. really, he didn't just catch it. No, it was a bit. team thing. If you look at the Straight Cast Instagram, you could see. How proppers work together, helping proppers Seth, land a giant gator Seth hit. hooked it and reeled it in partial. I worked on it for a minute until <laughs> I got decided it's too much work. <laughs> he, he was getting tired. And then I handed the rod to Pat. He finished her off, and I recorded Seth grab it. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing. And fighter just reached down and neck launched it and pulled it out of the water. Definite, like a warrior. Definite 60 30 split on the work. I mean, that one minute I did really bore the fish out. Yeah. Um, Matt beasted it. How yeah. you doing, Brucey? Everything good? Yeah, I'm doing you, good, bud. Can you hear us good and me, me and Matt good? Oh, yeah. I'll let you know. I'm not, I'm not shy. Okay. I just wanted no. to make sure. We're, I'm, yep. trying to re- I'm trying to figure you out right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, are, aren't you trying to figure him out no, right now? Oh, you already got it in dial? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I'm yeah. still trying to figure him out. Yeah. I already know Matt. We had grits and gravy one day and <laughs> chicken and waffles and whatever. That's all you need to know. Eating. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, grits and gravy with him, man. Well, but our, uh, <laughs> where was we at? Daggum uh, Cracker Barrel pancakes. Oh. That's what it was. Cracker Barrel's good. It wasn't that great that day either, was it? No, I couldn't tell the difference between grits and gravy. I had yeah, Matt. Matt good. was giving me a southern le- lesson, but well, yeah, a there's bit. a there's a definitive difference, actually. Yeah. But I yeah. like the waffle, uh, the uh, Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole. Oh, it is. Oh, good. that's good. That's good road food. Yeah. What do you guys eat up here when you have breakfast? That's what you eat down south, because I ain't never seen anything like that. Pop tart, usually yeah, cinnamon so, pop tart. Uh, Something like that. Yeah. You're healthy now, Matt. You're looking slim, bud. Thanks, brother. Yeah, I ate some yogurt this morning. He did. He even ran yesterday. What's that now? Matthew even ran here yesterday, like Aaron Martins. He got done fishing and went running. Yeah. That's hardcore, bud. How far did you go? I just ran two and a quarter miles yesterday. But I uh, got to keep it looking good for the ladies. And I know uh, these Minnesota ladies around Potter's neighborhood really enjoyed it. That's all I, can I was on the Tinder yesterday. I was swiping. Uh, yep. <laughs> <should I? laughs> True story. Let's do it right now, Matt. Let's go on Tinder real quick on I my Tinder. Hold on. I'm going to go on my Tinder, Brucey, and we're going to. Brucey, this yeah. area? 
of Minnesota has a lot of really good looking women in it. Yeah, yeah. they all wear UGG boots all year. Yes or no, Matt? I mean, We're Tinder and live on Get the Net right now. Okay, we'll turn the screen. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Kate. Okay. There you go. That's a swipe right. Swipe right. We don't know what that is right there. Yeah, that's a lefter. That's left. Yeah, this, uh, ah, Kate, that's a swipe right. Katie. Yeah, Katie's got a Katie. Swipe right. Far away picture, but good form. Well, I'll be honest with you, Bruce. Right. Like, well, I. We could say Bruce, we could sit here and do this all night. Yeah, I mean, this is a whole show. But he pretty much swipes right on everything. That's not true. That is not true. It, yeah. Well, Are you on the prowl these days, Pat? Or are you just oh, tender for recreation? I'm a single guy. Yeah, I'm a single okay. guy. Yeah, yeah, always. I mean, I, I mean, I have, uh, you know, I have three phones. Okay, I have one for conversations, uh, one for business, and one for relations. I'm going to so, tell you how it works, Bercy. Yeah. Truth is, and I mean, <laughs> he doesn't want to tell, tell the world this, but all the girls hit on me. And I'm like, listen, I'm married. I'm sorry. And then I'm like, but, you know, I got my dad over here. <laughs> Come here, <laughs> Pa. <laughs> I mean, if you think I'm good, think about the thing. Uh, me. So I it is away. foolproof. Works every time. We really do look like father and son. Within this we thing, we do. And it's I, we a little that. terrifying. Yeah. So <laughs> where's Spider? He's doing stuff for, uh, upstairs right now. He's rigging my pole. He's yeah. He's rigging uh, Matt's stuff up. Matt. He's uh, Matt's personal caddy. Yeah. Yeah. And, you better yeah. not be messing up your rusty hooks. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, I think he, man, he sharpens them every once in a while and pulls the rust off the tip. I don't like it. Yeah, he was making fun of your rust the other day when I was talking to him. He said he, he said really? it's kind of. Yeah, he said you said that, that it kind of sticks in there like glue, though, like adds a, adds a <laughs> level of insurance. Oh, really they is. can't throw the hook. No, think about this. Like, are you going to lose – if you want to grip something really good, is it going to be easier to lose a grip on something, you know, slick or something with texture? Whenever you grab a ball bat, you grab the textured part, not the smooth part, you know? Same deal, okay. you know? It goes in – Textured, harder to come out. If you got a smooth surface, it's going to slide out of the skin a lot easier. Just like we learned about dogs today. Yeah. Yeah. About when dogs reproduce. Oh. Yeah. Rusty hooks and, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it's hard to question. You know, you're sitting pretty in the points right now. You're sitting better than a lot of people with non-rusted and, and sharp hooks. So, yeah. you know. There's only like 24 other people in the world that can chirp your rusty hooks where you're sitting right now. Yeah. And know, I ain't one. Good way to put it, I Brucey. I appreciate that, Bruce. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I'll be honest with you. Like a lot of people thinks it thinks it's a joke, but um, ask Gussie and some of the other boys. Like last year at Champlain, we were selling top water, and I had an old top water laying there. Like my hooks are, are orange and brown, and they're at, and. <laughs> And they're old saltwater hooks, right? And they're orange and brown. And, like, some of the tips rounded on one of them. And Gus pulls up. He's like, oh, my God, man. Do you need some hooks? I got hooks. I'll give you some hooks. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, I'm good. And Carl, then Carl pulls up. He's like, oh, my gosh, mate. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Have you seen your hooks? <laughs> he sounded just yeah. like that. A Kentucky yeah. Australian. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah they could not you're getting better though i'm bruce yeah i'm tell, he's he's he, like all kidding aside he's he's tightening up he's tightening up the ship as evident in the points as you say bruce. I have, mm -hmm. yeah i still use rusty stuff where i'll have whenever one of my hooks are fixing to break i'll swap a hook out instead of using it yeah how do you know like how do you make that call um i can see that deep and so, you know instead of just like the orange surface rust like in the bend i'll see that deep dark brown and i'll see it eat down into it perma rust it's called like i boat flipped a fish and thought i and and thought that it just come off and landed in the boat and i go to fix my hook and half of it's gone like, okay yeah like, well hey that's time matt now, I'm saying this right now. This, I'm going to file the patent as soon as we hang up and before I release this. <laughs> but you don't have a truck. You got like a soccer mom SUV. I've seen it. Okay. In a lot of the trucks, um, you know, up here, I'm in truck country. When we get them, 
we uh, we have the box sprayed with like a rhino liner. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like a rough coat. So yeah, how about on them fishings rusto liner, and then you can spray a sharp hook. You know, you know it's going to be oh, that's actually a good idea, right? And it's tough in a little can. Yeah, but, yeah. You could brand it. You could have like you know picture you on it flexing. With um, I mean, like done deal, simple. There you go. There and then you, you can use sharp hooks, and you don't have to gauge the gauge where they're going to break. That's right. And if they are fixing to break, I can put it over my rusty hooks and then hold it together. Yeah, it's it's like it's like double protection. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like uh, if your deck's about to fall off, you can just paint it, and it'll be good for another year. Yeah, That's it's lipstick really on a pig. That's what it is. It's actually a really good yeah. idea. It's bro. putting lipstick yeah. on a pig. Hey, you know hey, what? Bud. There should well, be. I'll sign you. You're signed. The Matt Robertson Rustoleum hook liner. You yeah. got that figured. Pen pending. Yeah. I gotta write that down. Um yeah. trick. That could work, bud. But I'll be honest with you, it's actually a really good idea because I, I actually do believe the texture of the rest on the hook keeps them from coming off sometimes. The only thing you need sharp and good on a hook that ain't rusty is the is the very tip of it. The rest of it can be as rusty as you want. And you got a hook file and you dial her in. Yeah, I don't actually own one, but I have sets sharp in my hooks before we go out in the mornings, actually. That's true. Yeah, that's reasonable. Do you uh, do you have lots of hair jigs for St. Lawrence? Do I have a bunch? Yeah. No, I've been trying to get my boy to tie me a few. Connor sent me some outcast flies. And uh, yeah, man, I got those. I got, I don't know. I probably got about 10 of them, so I'm all ready for the hair jig game up there. And uh, hopefully, I think there'll still be some up shallow and go play with them. I'm not, I'm not the best hair jigger, but I can, I can catch a few on it. No, well, you made her on live last year throwing a hair jig. Yeah. She ain't the worst. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Very true. You look like the last fly fisher out there, fly yeah. fishing that thing. You know, river runs through it. Yeah. I'm getting where I can cast that thing pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. You using braided line or you got mono? Yeah, I thought that, uh, of course, the boys taught me everything I know, I mean, about it. So, I, you know, it ain't nothing I figured out on my own. Um, I thought that uh, nano fill braid, uh, Berkeley nano fill, yeah. and uh, just to uh, fluorocarbon leader. Nice, bud. Yeah. You just yard sale that little unit out there and <laughs> Yeah, really then it's kinda, you know, cast her out there and reel. Like it's kinda it reminds me of crappie fishing, except you catch a lot bigger fish or y'all call them specs or crappies? What do you call them up there? Dinner. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, them things get harvested up here, partner. Do they really? Right. Yeah. Pat. You've been on a, a bass fishing talk show for three minutes. You haven't said anything. I'm listening. Is it killing you? No. No. Because I didn't. It's only been three minutes? It seems like an hour. <laughs> I just made <laughs> that up. I feel like, you know, you're, I'm, I'd imagine that anyone listening to this show is going to know who you are. But if you don't, uh, this is Pat Renwick from Stray Cast Outdoor cartoon how do you say it outdoor cartoon, cartoon television. it's the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show basically okay so everything it's, is it's, glorified yes it's the best bass fishing talk show well thank um, you and and pat's an og at it he's one of very very few people that make a living talking about bass fishing uh there's a lot of people out there he has the the best of the best guests on uh you know like zona's on every year I and, and and Matt Robertson's on every day. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, these guys are trusting you with their career. So like cool. one, you know, you're on live one, one slip of the tongue and, and that could be it for them. So I just want to emphasize how, how big of a deal that is, uh, how much I look up to you and like your show and, and welcome you to, to get the net. Well, thanks, but I, don't, I was worried about having you on because it's kind of like, I mean, you're leading the charge in bass fishing talk shows. So let's see, you, you know, it's kind of like kicking KVD to the back of the boat and saying, <laughs> I'm you know, gonna you're, be you're the full cool angler now. This. 
I I I like to talk in case you can't tell. Just like just like my brother here. We we like to talk. And uh it's a, it's a uh it's a joy for me to do this where I don't I can just come on and talk and I don't have to prepare things or whatever and you uh you ask questions. So and we and and honestly like I don't know. I don't um I say no to a lot of these type of things and I probably shouldn't. But Matt and I were kind of talking about this and we're like, Bruce is cool AF, man. We're, we're <laughs> That's right. And uh, I like it. it's an honor to be here for real, man. You know, uh, it's uh, it's good. And, and uh, we enjoy your stuff. And you're you're no stranger to the straight cash show. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, yeah, I got, I got pulled out of the gutters and thrown in the limelight for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> it was a fun show, man. Everybody liked it too. You, you and Coop, and, and yeah, I, I looked down and I had an empty fridge. <laughs> <laughs> it goes like this, you know, when you're having fun. But, but seriously, thank you for the kind words. Doing what what I do for a living doesn't even seem like a, a real job, quite quite frankly. Uh, it's um, I mean. But uh, it, it's a blessing. That's, I don't know what else to say. Every day it's like, holy cow, this is what we do. We sling in 20-inch rock face block. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but to kind of, you know, to lead the charge at something, like fishing might not seem like a real job to a lot of people, but these guys are working their ass off. And, you know, ha- um, being doing this a little bit and, and any kind of content creation, it takes a lot of work. And if you want to be good at it, it takes even more work. So... It, you know, you're putting real work into it and downplaying it a little bit right now. But, uh, I mean, you guys are both at, at really the top of your game. So it's well, uh, a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can attest. Like, I've, I've been over Pat's house um, whenever he's preparing to do a show and seeing, like, he's got a ritual routine every day. And, uh, like, it's, it's uh, like, show day. It, it's the whole day prepping and everything and he's prepping you know four or five days in advance the whole week in advance um advertising it whatnot i've been a part of it and i've got to witness other shows you know i've sat there and literally watched the show go on and like you're finding out right now it's a it's a lot of work a lot of work yeah and thank well, you guys for yeah. the kind words thank you sincerely appreciate that from the heart yeah well i mean thanks for making bass fish and talk shows a thing i know you were you know part of the part of the og I, I, maybe it wasn't the first one but it you know it was uh it was the first one that just kind of took the technical stuff off of the table a little bit and just got to know the anglers so uh yeah. you know we're, we're seeing more of that now and it's uh i mean I maybe only have a couple buddies that care if uh, you're using a 16th ounce or a 332nd ounce, you know, marabou jig or like fighter said, what color spinner bait you're using. But I got a lot of people that I know and a lot of listeners that I know are interested in, you know, in someone's story coming up, uh, you know, their stories along the way and, yeah. and just diving into someone's character. And I, I think, that nobody exposes that, you know, as well as you guys do, um, on the show. So I mean, happy, happy to have you here. And, um, you know, it's, it's something we're seeing in bass fishing right now, uh, with you three specifically, uh, you guys are kind of, you have, you're able to be yourselves and people love you for it. So it's, it's kind of something that's, I mean, once you guys came along, it's kind of something that started trending in, in the industry. If you start looking at, um, you know, like who, who say the NPFL. So they just got fat cat Newton and, and Luke Duncan last year, you know, yeah. not, these are not like so straight they're, edge guys. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're, yeah. a lot, they're a lot more down to earth. Uh, they're not the most technical fishing guys, but they're down to earth and they're just kind of, it's, it's, it's what everyone wants. And I mean, I, what you guys opened up is, uh, 
is great and it, it makes it better for everyone else. And we spent a lot of time on this last week, but I just I, I have to bring that up while we've got while we've got you guys here. Well, well, thank you. I, I I think that's very important. Matt and I were talking about this on the boat today. That's like there's a lot of people that Matt. Can we just say it? There's a lot of fake people in bass fishing, and um, and they, it's it's like they're they're trying too hard almost. I don't mm-hmm. know, and I'm not trying. Believe me, I'm not trying to be be negative. The point of this whole thing is no matter what, just like you started with, Brucey, be yourself no matter what. And, and, and let me back up. It wasn't us like guys like Mike Iaconelli, yeah. quite frankly, did all that kind of stuff first guys like Mark Zona on the entertainment. And, uh, yep. you know, nobody was had shows like, like Zona when Zona first come out, there was no, no. fisherman like Mike Iaconelli when Mike Iaconelli first came out being himself and he gave zero F's man. And he did it. And that conveys to the people, the genuineness, the realness, the authenticity and how much you love bass fishing is what conveys to the people. I don't know. It's how. true. I'll tell you what, there's like, uh, we get to, get to, you know, talk to a lot of the guys behind the scenes and know some of them off camera. And I'm going to tell you there, uh, there's some of them that I really wish they would come out of their shell. Because I'm going to tell you, <laughs> they are a right. Yeah. I mean, right. a right. And, and I get why they're not doing it. You know, like, like they've already, I think part of the issue is people have branded their, branded their self as a certain thing, more or less. And, uh, and I think, I don't know if it conflict with some sponsors or, or what would happen, but, um, I think like, I, I wish they would go ahead and come out of their shell and be themselves. Um, like it wasn't even, I it never even dawned on me. I mean, I've been like, I've been like this since high school, you know, I mean, well, since when well, I can't even remember, I just I always got in trouble anyway. And it ain't stopped to, it ain't stopped till now. So might, might as well keep the ball rolling. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> been fired too many for times from too many jobs. I mean, you name it. Um, but yeah, man, there's, I wish, I wish all the guys would come out of their shell. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are kind of, you, you're making it a little more possible for that to happen. So, you know, we hope it does. And and we're seeing it. We're seeing it. So, um, you know, we could, we could go on and on about this and, and it's, you know, it's great stuff and I love it. And I think that everyone listening understands that that's why they click this damn button. (laughs) They don't want to see someone in a, in a polo shirt talking about a lead or not. Um, I want to say, man, my whitey tighties. Yes, yeah, we were going to pull our hair back in ponytails too, but we decided to not clean up for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what's the deal? Why are you in Minnesota? So once or twice a year. To, I mean, it just depends on on when. But we just uh, me, Seth, and Pat get together and. Uh, you know, we're all three buddies, and we just get together and and go fishing for two, three, four days wherever we're at. You know, we we got together in Florida at the beginning yeah. of the year, and yeah. uh, and uh, here in Minnesota, we try to get together in God's country, of yeah. course. Come up here and play around at Seth's house for a few days, and and then uh, go home for the Fourth of July, and. And then blow stuff up, blow stuff up. Yeah, a good time. We're Miracle. professionals at that. Miracle. And yeah, and man. do they sell fireworks in Kentucky? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Every three hundred yards, there's a firewood stand. Or oh, uh, you know, they're they're everywhere. everywhere. Indiana right? too. Yeah, everywhere. you can get a pack of cherry bombs at a local gas station here. You really can. One hundred percent. Just don't light them while you're pumping gas. It's just no. gas expensive. Fireworks are cheap. Yeah, that could be an issue. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it must be nice to be up up north, Pat. I know Matt's from uh, from Kentucky Lake, and you know it's a nice place to be. But you, uh, I, I've been watching your Instagram stories. Yeah. And they ain't exactly scenic, bud. Like you're you're fishing in some <laughs> in some less than favorable. Um, 
Well, I mean, they look like ditches along the interstate. They, they what... are ditches along the interstate, and thank God I got a crest liner because I just run over everything and all things to get there. The uh, But, yeah, it's ditches. They're not scenic, and I don't have much to choose from. I live yeah. in the armpit of, armpit of the nation of bass fishing, 100%. Yeah, but he's he in the, armpit, him. in the armpit of the nation. He's managed to find a few killer holes. I got some sneaks. Yeah, y- yeah. I, I it looks to, that way. It went, well, Fighter was ragging on me today about it. He's like, "You got Lake Michigan right there. There's five pound small mouse and dub 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 dub." And I'm like, "I know, but I don't want to go there." I, I go, "It's too industrial." And he goes, "Well, what the hell do you think you're fishing?" <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I'd rather fish the ditches, bud. That's exactly what I do. I roam the ditches and the creeks and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little ditch rat. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. You don't have to bother with, with pan optics or any of that. You're just, you probably see a bunch of diapers and old barrels and shopping carts if you had a live scope. So you may as well just, yeah, he, was to where you can figure, see. he was trying to figure it out on Seth's boat today. He's like, so what's the red? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey, I am getting good at side imaging, though. But I don't got that periscope or nothing that these guys use that shows them all that shit. I don't get it. No, you just get stuck where you're fishing with that thing. I do. And if I, I like, but I did learn this about electronics from fishing with John Cox. And I use this all the time. So when you keep it on side image and then that black part gets real skinny, shut down the motor. Shut the motor down. That's yeah, that's a good fun. lesson. You know, you just take it off a plane. And then you know you're safe. And then you put the trolling motor down and start fishing. I think there's a lot of times that doesn't work for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the most beat-to-hell boat I've ever seen in my life. We both run crest liners, and they both uh, cringe at uh, things that, yeah. They've hit the bottom plenty. If you saw the bottom of my boat's black, but the bottom's silver for some reason. Yeah, you shined her up a little. Yeah. Sam blasted it. Oh, yeah. Listen, we're going out there fishing this one ditch. <laughs> He's like, okay, we got to go over a few logs and stuff. And I'm like, all right, like I'm thinking we're just going to jump them. So he eases the boat up on them, gets them almost over. Well, we're trying to push them down like they'll move a little bit. You could be, you could tell them what it really is. They weren't logs. I don't care. We're not going to get They were these floats. Environmental they're barriers. Environmental barriers. <laughs> downtown chicago and they're floating under they're stuck under the motor in between the motor and the boat and he's supposed to have a rake and uh like a, a push like pole a, yeah and push pole and all this stuff no we get a half a broken boat paddle <laughs> and that was it trying to push this thing down a sock like foam this big around bigger than your head but for uh, real i got two th marine paddles now they're perfect for it one guy gets one and the other guy gets the other end. you go over to barrier Boop, it's bacons. Bacons. I got to say, yeah. he's got some holes, but he catch some great big small mouths. He's like, yeah, I don't want to. It's too industrial. Okay, catching them out of a discharge fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one, one of my favorite times was I took Matt there, and uh, it was before you were in Elite Series, yeah. Angler, and uh, it, you, Matt was doing little commercials there. <laughs> you, remember, uh-huh. you, you were doing little commercials, throwing the jig in there. Hi, I'm Matt Robertson. Soak! <laughs> Crossing their eyes. <laughs> they call him Matty the Mono Stretcher back then. Oh, right? he is. Oh, he is. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. They, it really is, Bruce. They've gotten me using a lot of fluorocarbon now, I got to tell you. But yeah. I'm still major, like, Mono's the go-to. But every time you break in that damn fluorocarbon. Yeah, every time you use the fluorocarbon, I'll break Breaking it. Damn shit off. Well, you can't so put the lion back in the cage. Right there, buddy. I broke off a big one yesterday. I mean, on, great big one. On that, on that chicken. Yeah. That's oh, cool. I mean, if you're fishing mono into into your, you know the up and coming of your career, and and you know right now you're you're at the peak of your career, and you're just switching to fluorocarbon. Like I said, you can't put the tiger back in the cage. Oh, if you're used yeah. to Billy Dance just teeing Pandora off, don't one, go back in the box. Son. Someone, someone put unstretchable fluorocarbon yeah. in your hand. You're going to be tally whacking that stuff. Oh yeah, you like know, unless hard. you go to like a crappie rod. Yeah, I mean, and that's the problem is, I, you know, 
I like the mono. I still use the mono all the time, probably 80% of the time. Um, I'll use fluorocarbon on my leaders a lot, but yeah, man, I'm a big mono guy. A lot of people don't throw it, but dude, I still love it to death. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you have me sampling it. I, uh, <laughs> I got a great big 1500 yard spool of, uh, 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 some suffix mono and I, and I bought it specifically for using as backer on reels. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> I bought, yeah, I bought it to throw it away. It's filler. Appreciate your honesty. And, and I, I always bite my line. That's, I got a bad habit. I got yeah, shot yeah, over too. the days and I went to bite it and it was like, it was pretty solid. So I spooled it right up to the tits and I, uh, I threw a chatter bait on it for you, Maddie. Nah, so, you yeah. like it? uh, pretty stretchy. Yeah, it was still, it was a lot better than mono was back in the day. Yeah. Um, but I didn't lose any fish. There you go. That's I definitely happened. drilled a log and wasn't sure if I had a fish or not for <laughs> two, are you two throwing four it on seconds glass? after. Are, are you throwing it on glass too? Or graphite? No, no, no graphite. graphite. We don't, we don't get too technical like you winders. It's, <laughs> uh, you know, put it, put it in front of a fish up here and when it bites it, you just catch it. You oh, know, it's not. Some dummies, yeah. Yeah, I know you're a glass. You're a glass runner. You got the old yeah, bond like old resin rod. Yeah, I'd like to fish for those fish of yours, though. Up there, that's what I was saying. The dumb ones. Wow, some of them are really dumb, aren't they? Yeah, there's some dumb ones, and then it's funny. There's there's some educated ones in in the crystal clear water, and a lot of times people think fish are are just picky because they're pressured. But we'll go to the middle of nowhere. And, you know, if it's crystal clear water post-spawn, you'll see hundreds of them, and you'll catch, like, one in every 20. Wow. Even, you know, haven't seen a lure in 15 years. They're just that in tune with their environment. Just the way of the road, yeah, clear water. Yeah. So, I mean, we're lucky to have that because you do get, you know, you actually get good at catching some pressured fish a little bit. So, um, they're not all dumb, but there's a bunch of dumb ones. Buddy, I'm ready. I don't know why. But I have yet to go fishing this year where I just get to go catch a bunch of dumb ones. Mm. Like tomorrow. Is, tomorrow. Tomorrow is supposed are. to be the day. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow supposed to be the day. So tomorrow. I just want to set the hook a bunch. Yeah. Well, you went on Mille Lacs today. I, um, I think it was Chode or Boston or someone said they were uh, – last year they were throwing it. They'd see a bass on a boulder on their periscope and – throw the drop shot at it and it would just pack its lunch and swim away oh yeah, <laughs> yeah it seemed to happen today too right man they were just going fighters like you're swimming right with the boat <laughs> yeah i mean it was decent today you know yep. it went a little harder way than we anticipated can i have a cabbage yeah. patch uh sour patch kid while we're on your show absolutely um were you able to find a frosty's up north or a wendy's up north pat Oh yeah, we we uh, I wish there was some Wendy's here. Yeah, yeah, because I could go for a Frosty right now. You know, like that strawberry Frosty. Yeah, strawberry Frosty's limited edition. Yeah, I love them. Yes, yeah, sir, absolutely. Yeah, we busted a Matt one night. He was buying seven <laughs> seven Frosties in the drive through We drunk dialed them, FaceTimed them, and he had oh, seven. My two. God. It was two. it was buff. It was buff. Dustin. <laughs> oh my God. He's always drunk dialing me. Seven. So he it, he said, in my defense, I just dump them all into a big bucket and add strawberry quick, like it was better. Yeah. No, I do. There's a method. No. You get you. So you take the. It's not seven. I don't put all seven. I put three. There were seven there, though. I got seven. It's true. True story. <laughs> got seven. You put three. I got one of them big shake things. You know, big silver shake tin cup mm -hmm. shake thing. Put three of them in there. Then you put the strawberry quick, right? And then you put Captain Crunch with crunch berries. It's delicious. I got to tell you, I got a chocolate frosty one time, and my, mm -hmm. my neighbor made triple triple threat chocolate brownies, or triple threat brownies, you know, triple chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Chopped them up into chunks about yay big, mixed them in with the frosty, eat that sucker, and it's the best thing I ever ate, but it's too, it was just too much sugar. Puked it all up about five minutes later. I want to do it off the ground. Right. It's so good. God dang, man. Yeah, but that ain't that. You're not about that now. You're on a health kick. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I've been doing good. 
I've ate a little bit of crap up here, but I'm still keeping her going. Are you guys, uh, you guys come onto the green diesel pretty heavy, the Mountain Dew? I don't. No? I don't. Yeah, I, and honestly, I'm, I, sugar is one of my biggest enemies. But I, like, and I eat really healthy, but this week, since I'm here in Minnesota, I'm just eating whatever the hell I want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I I've been eating pretty healthy. The, you know, the winter time, like when you and, uh, when you and, and Buff uh, caught me at the Wendy's getting yep. seven, getting the old seven pack. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the off season. I wasn't training then. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so you, you've told me twice now that you've eaten healthy. I've only had three interactions with you. One, you were getting seven Frosties. And the third interaction, you're eating oh, okay. salad kids on the air. <laughs> I, one where I was on vacation, and I'm, I'm on vacation now. Isn't this vacation? Yeah, I'm he, on vacation. He said he's eating like crap this week. Yeah, I swear to God, on my behalf. Am I, Matt, am I not in good shape? No, he, he, like, I will give him this. Like, I, I run, but, like, he runs. Like, if he wanted to go run eight miles right now, like, he would do it and not even think twice. No, 100%. I mean, and I'm not, I'm a beast, and I'm not saying that for any reason but i run like i mean just saying because plain and simple i got endurance man i can run yeah. like a wolf I yeah don't know. I don't like know. i run two and a half miles every day he runs about four every day that's you know, doing her four to yeah. five yeah i take saturdays and sundays off to rest my bones but yeah no and i'll be completely honest with you i i was running so i could eat like a jag off you know so i could just eat whatever the hell i wanted anytime yep. all right but as you get older, that doesn't always work. Now, don't forget, I might act like I'm 12, but I, I'm like 50-something right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't, I'm not quite sure. 68. I was born in 68. So, to, you know, point be told, it catches up with you, Brucey. So when I went to Aaron uh, Martin's memorial back uh, before, the, before the Classic, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I was still running four miles or so a day, but I'd be sucking down a two-liter of Coca-Cola. You know what I mean? Or yep. I'd have three Frosties. Or I'd eat me a double bacon cheeseburger. Okay? And I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm like, I was at Aaron's thing, and I'm like, Aaron's probably looking at me like, you fat fuck. Get yourself together, and uh, and you're running, so start eating a little healthier and take care of yourself. And uh, and I'll be yep. honest with you, ever since then, I kind of... I kind of did that. Now, yeah, damn straight. I'm eating some sour patch kids right now. I'm only human. I'm just, I'm just taking a chirp at you. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you, know. you do, but I'm being, I'm being serious because sugar is something that I really do struggle with, man. You know, I've quit nicotine. I've quit lots of things, man. And uh, sugar's tough, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, the reason I was asking is because I see, I, for whatever reason, Mountain Dew is just like the Southern coffee. Oh, it, it really is. is it? Like, it really is. Like, I used to drink, I don't know, four, four or five Mountain Dews a day. Throw, mm -hmm. uh, throw a Coke in there every once in a while, you know, it was a go-to. And a packet of sugar. Yeah. Yeah, like Michael Scott. Yep. <laughs> Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt adds sugar to his Coke, to his Diet Coke. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. <laughs> that, how's that make sense? <laughs> Tell me this. <laughs> well, it's, it's absent sugar, so you added sugar. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> How'd it taste? Pretty good. Yeah. People I might try that. I got to try that. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad to hear you boys are running. And uh, I know, uh, Matt, you're running for a reason. Are you... You, it's. I saw a video of you on a treadmill, and you were shit talking Palinuk and and Summerall. Oh yeah. Let's let's talk about this. We got to get into it a little bit. I know Pat's <laughs> advise you not to fight unless it's a sanctioned event in a you know in a ring and a oh, yeah. no, in no. a controlled setting, which you know we need we need like real mature types there. Cause yeah. Matt, Matt, I'm just, Matt, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just got to say this. Matt no. will, he will not tap out and they'll just kill him. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so at the first event, we have, before the event even started, started in Florida at St. John's, we were out to dinner. Um, we was sitting there having a good time, eating dinner, had a few drinks and, uh, yeah, me and Caleb got to mouth and I told him I'd wrestle him. I said, I'll, I told him, I said, I'll whoop your ass, Caleb. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and he's like, oh, you can get you some right now, right here in the sand. It's like, okay, let's go. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something about it. I was, I was about 270 pounds then. And Caleb Summerall's 245 pounds and nothing but muscle. Mm-hmm. Like not an ounce of fat on That guy's as easy as the He's, he's like a purebred athlete. Yeah. He's fast. Run for miles. Yeah. So he had me on the ground choked out. I didn't even know what happened. I'll be honest with you. I didn't. Even, hey, I'll be. I about had him for about a half a second. I almost mm-hmm. had my arm around him, get a chokehold, but it kind of just. He's too strong. And and yeah, he, he choked me out. But I told him he's a little sissy, and because uh, he because I was I was fixing to go to sleep. Like I won't tap out ever, no matter what. Y'all never tap out. And yep. I told him that before we did it, and he, he got scared and let me go because he thought he was fixing to kill me. But <laughs> so, but yeah, and then uh, I've known Brandon for years. So that was a tie. Count that as a tie, right? Yeah, you know, Caleb, like, Caleb, if you can't put me unconscious, like, I pretty much beat you. Hey, Brucey, did you ever hear how he met Palinick the first time? Uh,. Yeah, because I'm a bass fishing nerd. Okay. But I'd love we got I I would love to delve into it some more. <laughs> I think it's a cool yeah. story. I don't know. Uh so back in I think I want to say it's two thousand and eight, maybe, at a TBF national championship at Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Uh we both qualified for it. And whenever they booked the rooms, they booked it, you know, you know, you rooming with another angler. And just so happens, they put us rooming together. <laughs> Just, I mean, he hadn't made the elites. He was come from Idaho, and I come from Kentucky. And meet him and everything. Well, let me tell you, Brandon Palinick is a lucky little shit. <laughs> okay? Let me tell you about this. So, so we're there. You, what level are you guys on? It was, it, were you guys both, like, local legends when you met up? Before you went uh, into the no, no, just so we can get them back. No, neither we were nobodies. Both of us wasn't crap. Uh, nobody, nobody knew who either of you were. I was twenty, I think. Okay, couple kids in a yeah, hotel. Couple kids, like nothing. And I show up, and he shows up, and he shipped all his fishing gear out there. Well, his fishing gear got lost. Okay, well. A couple of the companies was there, pure fishing and whatnot, and they just, you know what? This, this young kid, all this stuff is stolen. Oh, here's rods, reels, brand new reels, brand new rods. Oh, you need baits? Bringing in boxes, two foot by three foot by two foot deep, full yep. of tackle. Oh, here's this. I mean, I got I got six box. I got boxes stacked seven foot high, new rods and reels, and I'm sitting here like, I ain't got shit. I, ain't, <laughs> I got. Got my fifty dollar combos over here. I'm like, hell man, I lost my shit too. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I just got one, one rod, you know, and a couple of jigs or something. But yeah, Dave lost everything in the mail and come out way ahead. I guarantee it, way ahead. Got all brand new tackle and everything. And yeah, we uh, we had a good week, and he was actually leading it after day one and then had a bad day too. But, uh, but yeah, man, we, uh, yeah, spent the week together and went to the, had a big expo and everything went there. And that was the first time I'd ever seen Jimmy Houston and Jimmy Houston was my hero growing up. And, and I couldn't even go talk to him. Well, we kind of split up, went the separate ways and he come back that evening, that afternoon and he brought me a picture from Jimmy Houston signed to me because I was too scared to go up and talk to him. Yeah, that's so, awesome. So yeah. f- fast forward a few years. Yeah. Um, Cause I know all your shit got robbed. Oh yeah. So did you just see Palinick's success when his stuff got stolen and like hired Mo Sislak to steal <laughs> your truck? <laughs> 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 and then you get all this new shit and get to meet yeah. Jimmy Houston? Yeah, I didn't exactly. I'm not as lucky as Palinick, you know. But I did have some people step up and, and help me out, so I can't say nothing about that. Um, they basically, I still had my rods and stuff in my boat. and But uh, I had some people step up, I got to tell you. So I got to experience the thing same thing he experienced so yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty that cool. was heart, that was a heartbreaking though i, I oh, mean yeah. i couldn't make light of it because i couldn't imagine i mean yeah. 
I'm, I'm sure you being a bass fishing nut yourself, Brucey, I, I've never seen the, the bass fishing community step up like they did when Matthew's yeah. stuff got stolen, quite frankly. I mean, the way, and don't forget, this is before Matt, Matty was an elite and everything yeah. else, man. I mean, yeah. that, uh, that uh, it was a huge uh, outreach from the entire bass fishing community to kick some ass to whoever stole Matt Robertson's shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Justice Gussie started. had all his shit stolen a few years ago and he got it back. Yeah. Yeah, that. right. yeah. That's rare. Yeah, and that is. Yeah. They got Horatio on the scene and Dustin for Prince and tracked it down at a dirty old flea market and there's all his rods. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Traded them for a bag of meth and yeah, that was <laughs> I mean, good. Man. I mean, man. No more so, trading in shopping carts and refurbing them. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> you started with Brandon, that was 2008. He would have made the elites shortly after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, how long you fished the class? When did you fi- first fish the classic? Because I know you fished the classic uh, uh, four years ago, so 2018. You did it twice before the elites, though, right? Yeah, yeah. One was the fur coat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I brought I brought a fur <laughs> coat. coat all of them, but yeah. Um, well, the one I had a uh, snake skin red and black snakeskin blazer but yeah i mean it uh two i qualified through the bass nation team trail the first time and then i want to open on a cherokee lake for the second one and then i fished my third classic third elite series qualification Mm Mhm. i watched you on that cherokee one yeah it was uh that last day was pretty trying man i've been catching them all deep and yeah, it kind of my area dirtied up, and I didn't have a fish at eleven forty-five, and pulled the plug and went and uh, got. I got to fish exactly how I like to fish. I got to fish super fast, buzzing down the bank, you know, fishing fast and uh, throwing the top. With the rusty hook spook. Guaranteed. Back then, for sure, a hundred percent. Yep, hundred percent. I saw it. I saw it. I couldn't see the rust because I've only got like a 720p uh, <laughs> rig here. But I, you know, after after talking to you, I know. The, and that was one of the best adjustments I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I usually don't just just yeah. send people messages on the internet. But I said, you know, I I think I reached out and said like, you know, yeah. whatever, good job or whatever, whatever it was. Um, yeah. But you know that. Uh, that was a, a big adjustment and it, it put you in the classic and that's really what kind of kick-started everything for you, right? Oh yeah, man. Qualifying for the classic and, uh, you know, that, that win really helped me qualify for the elites too, you know? So yeah, it, it really, you know, Kindled. you never know whenever a little adjustment like that, you know, really makes an impact on your whole career. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I like it. Yeah, it's um, fun. yeah, bud. You know, and you're, you're like I, I, when you first went to the classic, it was like, okay, there's this guy's got a crown on, and you know, it's funny, and yeah. um, a lot of people probably thought it was your fir- it was going to be your first and last time there. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, there's guy David Height said it himself, and you know what? Yeah. Um, a part of me's like one one part of me. It's like, whenever I heard Davey say that, it's like one part of me, the redneck, is like, you mother, you know, and then, then if I get it, like, it, like if I was in their position, I 100% understand, like, who, who the hell is this dude? Oh, he qualified there and open, yeah, he probably won't be back. So, uh, yeah, I get it, I completely understand, but, uh, so. <laughs> well, we're glad you're around, man. Um, yeah. He's good for the sport, Brucey. He's excellent for the sport. Because the best thing about bass fishing uh, as a sport, I think, and the thing that we're at most risk of losing is the ability for, you know, a a blue-collar guy in his 30s to still make it. It's one of the few sports where the dream doesn't fade. And and I think that that really, that's what kind of funds the industry. Oh, yeah. 
you know, if, if you take that dream away and it's, it's only, you know, the, I, I get it. High school fishing is great program. I, I would love to have been a part of it. College fishing, same thing. And, you know, roll into it. And that's, that's how every other sport works. That's yeah. how, you know, football, baseball, hockey, whatever, anywhere you look at it, that's how it is. Uh, but the best thing about fishing and why it's, I think it's so popular and why adults are so passionate about it is, is because a, a blue collar guy can live that dream that you're currently living and you're living proof of it. And there's, there's a bunch of you guys. So. Yeah. Let me tell you, I've had the shitty 40 hour a week job. And I know most people listening to this had the shitty 40 hour a week job and it fucking sucks. Pat, Pat had the shitty 40 hour a week job. We both did. And uh, Shit, we had 80 hour a week job. Yeah. Dude, I was work, yeah we was, I was working 16, 18 hours a day. People don't understand. Like, like I'd work 80, 90 hours a week. And I know a lot of people are thinking, yeah, you know, you're probably full of shit. Well, you know, there's boys out there that, that, that can attest to it. And, uh, yeah, dude, like, you got to work your ass off for it. Like, you got to want it. It's not a, it's not a, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to fish once or twice a week, you know, and I'm going to go on the weekend. Like, you got to sacrifice a lot. You got to sacrifice your family time. You got to, like, to be a professional fisherman, I hate to say it, you got to be a selfish person. Because you're mm-hmm. going to take all your time and effort and put it into fishing. And and that's the bottom line, you know. And it's just like anything professional. you got to put put your hard work in and all that crap. And uh, when you're out the battle, you're out the battle. Yeah, dude. Like, and it's not just for a year or two. Like, a lot of guys will do it for a year or two, three years. Dude, I was, I guess I was 34 whenever I made it. 30, 33. Yep. Like I've been busting my ass, you know, for, you know, I was working at, you know, working for forever. <laughs> to make. When, I can't even remember. When I first met Matt, be like, what, what, what are you doing, man? He's like, oh, burnt my hand on this damn man. Muffler. Yeah, muffler. I'm pressure washer. <laughs> pressure washer. I'm like, how are you going to go flip bushes, man? Water's up in the bushes on south. <laughs> And he's out there working 16 yeah. hours. I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's the, it's the blue collar dream. And and if it yeah. goes away, it's, it's not going to be a good thing for the industry. And I, I talk about it all the time and I, I hate to keep coming back to it, but I've, uh, you know, I've had you guys and fighter back to back. So that's what we're going to talk about. Like that's, yeah. it's going to come up. Yeah, um, fighter's a blue collar worker. 100%. Um, you know, I get I get some I get a lot of the credit for being a blue collar worker, but there's still other guys fishing that you know, you know, are blue collar workers and made it. And well, I th- I think that there's actually more of them than not. Yeah, it is. in the elites yeah, right now. You either got you either got um. It's a money sport. Though. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think it's like you gotta. You gotta have. I mean, you gotta be able to afford a bass boat. You gotta be able to afford a truck. You gotta be able to afford to travel. And the yep. only way I could do that was to work 16, 18 hours a day. I mean, I worked two full time jobs for a while. I'd get up at be at work at six, get off at two thirty, go to the next one at three, and work till eleven thirty. I mean, every day. And like, I was a zombie, but that's what I had to do to get the money to be able to. Do. Uh, but you you knew the transition point yeah in every everybody that is is working in the fishing industry that came from something else there's blue collar worker for my example doing a zillion different jobs and now a, a a talk show host there's that transition point where you go from doing what you were doing to what you want to do and if you don't go all the way in you don't succeed so the transition point is very important, as I think yeah. Matt will attest. The timing has to be right. I mean, Matt was working his ass off. It's not like all of a sudden Matt just won and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna I'm an elite series angler now." It was a progression of hard work, winning tournaments, and timing. And that timing isn't, "Oh, I want to do this now." Like I wanted to do it a long time ago, but I know I didn't have the means to, and yeah, it just, 
you can't just do it whenever you want. You got to set yourself up for it. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you already got the money, but so no, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for you. And, and then you're not full yeah. in anyway, though. Yeah. I mean, it's like because those those people don't seem to be as thirsty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, the some, golden the golden parachutes there. Um, yeah. You know, it's uh, if you don't cash a check, you're not going to have to worry about your bills, that kind of thing. And right. uh, yeah, I mean, but if you, sleeping. that's easy sleeping. But how about the people that that don't catch five fish? Or how about Seth when he first started out sleeping couch yeah. to couch? You yeah. know, and having having you know a few years where he didn't make a gosh dang dime. Yeah, no one. It, I'm sure it makes guys appreciate being out there more and having the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I mentioned this in the last one, just adding another layer of resilience, um, you know, a, lo- a lot less likely to get rattled. And it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of the sport is that. Matt, Matt's skin is thick and so is mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <What's yours>? Um, <laughs> we can tell. Yeah. Well, I mean, this, this is a topic for me because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going through it right now. I got to decide, you know, big chunks of change that you had to earn and, and to go put that on the table. Like I, I get it. Uh, and, and you're, you know, you're, you're up against, uh, you're up against dad's visa a lot of the time. Um, so I'm, and you know, it's, it's, it's not all I'm going to talk about on the show, but it's, it's just something that keeps coming back up and, uh, you know, uh, good 100%, day. Brucey. You, you want to, you want to do it too. I mean, and that's, and it's just, you're working hard at it. We see you taking the steps, you know, it's the same, it's the same thing. Yeah. Don't know, but you'll never do it unless you're all in. Just let yeah. me know. I know. So, I know. I'm hunting for the all in point. You know, if you've busted your ass for the money to do it, now you're questioning losing that money. Buddy, you ain't got nothing to lose. Hell, if you come down here, spend all that money, and it don't happen, then you go back to the same old bullshit you was doing, and you'll you'll have enough money by the time it's time to retire. Yep. yep. I, mean, I mean, I'm just telling you, you don't want to be 60 and be wondering if you could have made it. Just exactly. That, spend it, the same money. Thank you. I was bringing up right now Rick Clun's yeah. post today. You know, basically take the hinge off your uh, knee and quit kicking yourself in the ass. Because if you don't try it, you'll never know if you can do it or not. And Rick Clum today says, "What? I don't have my glasses." But if you give up, it means you never really wanted it. What a freaking legend! How about it? <laughs> How about it? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Well, we're not going to get stuck on this because uh, I, I, um, it's cool I like that. It's real talk. Let's talk fighting, bud. We were talking about the ring. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, well, how yeah. the hell did we get on that shit? Okay. Caleb running his mouth, beat me up. Corey running his mouth, man, Corey wrestled. Um, I had, and the truth, this is a true story. He can say it every once day. I had Corey beat. I had him in a headlock, had him beat. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, I'm letting you go, Corey. So I loosen up, let him go, jumps around me, puts him in a headlock, says he beat, beat me. I'm like, are you serious, dude? So there's another law somewhere after. He um, million dollar baby do you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, and then and then me and Chris, well, I walked in and woke him up and he's a little crabby. And and I messed with him a little bit and he, he gets up. I didn't even know what he was doing anything. He pulls my daggum hoodie over my head and starts I'm on the ground and he's slapping me on the belly and crap. Yeah. Like, okay. Involved, yeah. Another they hazed him. I told him, I said, this is supposed to be wrestling, but not some stupid hockey shit. And so they counted that as a loss. And <laughs> those were grapes on your forehead. And then me and Corey wrestled again. And it was like a, it was just a tie. Like we were just, neither one of us was letting go and it wasn't nothing happening. So we'll just call it a draw. And because I didn't beat him, they counted it as a loss. And yeah. So you get to Palinick. Mm-hmm. Little Palinick. Oh, it was at the it was at the classic. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god, this is a good one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. At the classic in Knoxville, Seth, Seth, Pat, Palinick, and a couple other guys were standing around talking. And Seth, I was had an irritation. It was really bothering him. He scratched it all red. 
And I walked up, I mean, I just walked up mid conversation and Pat's like, Oh yeah, Brandon punched Seth and I and I was like, <laughs> Brandon couldn't knock nobody out. Look at little Brandon, look how big his arms and look look how big his arms are. He ain't knocking nobody out. And uh and yeah, we uh we got to Malvin and I guess Brandon's some state championship wrestler, but he ain't shit. I'm yeah. Uh but yeah, that's how it got into uh the whole wrestling deal with me and Caleb. Uh, and I, actually, that's part of the reason I started getting in shape is because I was training to beat Caleb. Yeah. I mean, you might want to start with someone a little bit smaller. Well, but. I probably do need to bulk up for Caleb because he's such a monster. But, yeah, Palinick's smaller. It's kind of a no-win situation with Palinick. Like, even though he's state champion wrestler, all people's going to see is me at 220 pounds. And... Palinick is 160. It's a no-win situation if I beat him. Oh, I'll uh, beat up little Palinick. Uh, oh, Palinick Dude. beats me. Oh, Palinick beats the shit out of him. He's huge. Yeah. It, it's a, you're in the same situation as hopping in a coming off the elite series yeah. and hopping in a Tuesday nighter against the locals. Yeah. If yeah. you win, if you win, you're an asshole. If you lose, you suck. I'm telling you, like no-win situation. What are you gonna do? Catch 44. Well, Still gonna beat the crap out of Palinick. Have you ever been in like a real fight? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Pat, you've been you've been in some street fights. You're from Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Probably on the daily. No. No, no. I got punched on my front porch not too long ago. That was the last time I got in a fight, quite frankly. But uh probably a couple of years ago. Two years, two years ago. <laughs> Um, Wouldn't share your frosties, eh? Yeah, I, I don't know. Something happened. Our boy took his frosty. <laughs> Still okay. standing on the phone the whole time. I couldn't even believe it. That kid had a reach. He was at the bottom step. I was all the way on the top talking on the phone. Saying, no, he clocked me. I'm still talking on the phone. My friends were down Sturgeon Bay. They're like, you just get shot. And I'm like, no, he's got hit in the jaw. <laughs> 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 so you guys are no stranger to roughhousen and pat i'm gonna steal a, a something you'd probably do on your show okay sure okay just because you're here uh you know you got you, you doing, got what's fighter doing is he, in the, is he in the house yeah he's okay. right here. He's doing okay well he can weigh in on some of these questions too we're gonna play a game oh, oh, oh. let's do it Okay, you guys are ready? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not talking wrestling. On this? Yeah. What's You're that? Playing. Do I get to buy in on this? He's playing. Oh, yeah. No, each okay. of you guys are going to go one at a time and give me your answer. Okay. That you can start. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you. We're not talking wrestling. We're talking no holds barred, street fight. Who's going to win? Okay? Yeah. So... You know, I'm not going to niche down too hard. I'll start with an easy one. I'll yeah. throw a lob ball at Pat, and then Matt can answer, and then Seth. So, first one, Bill Dance or Donald Trump? No holds barred street fight. Oh, Bill Dance. Hmm. Donald yeah. Trump, 100%. <laughs> oh, Bill Dance well, tastes well, small. No, well, no, no. Well, Bill, no, Bill Dance ain't too small. Plus, Bill Dance has Bill Dance has sneaky, proper bassing people. That rival the Central Intelligence Trump's Agency. Trump's like six four. He's gonna yeah, pat but, Bill but, Dance on the head and he's gonna fall over. Bass his head. fishing, bass fishing trumps all. I'm okay. gonna go to the draw. They're both old as shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was just a warm up, so people knew what we were talking about. Now we're yeah. gonna get serious. That was a lob ball. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I this Bill Dance wins. This one. You know, and I agree with you, Pat. Bill Dance would kick the shit out of Trump. He's got the he's got a temper. He's you know done deal. Um, Tommy Sanders versus Brandon Card. Tommy Sanders. Tommy Sanders. Tommy Sanders. Yeah, Tommy. Brandon yeah. Card can beat up anyone. <laughs> Not even Austin Phillips. <laughs> okay. Okay. Unanimous. Yeah, we're taking Tom. Lee Livesey versus both of the Johnstons. 
Oh. Both the Johnsons, because I've seen Chris beat up Lee by himself. So <laughs> dumb, <laughs> dumb, dumb Corey wouldn't even have to get involved. They're like the Hanson brothers, those two. If Corey got involved, he could mess it up for Chris and I could lose though. Chris is a tough son of a bitch then. I know. Ragdoll, Jack and Robertson and Livesey. So both of them against Lee? Yeah. Obviously it's Chris. Dude, they're both the Johnston brothers are like the Hanson brothers in Slapshot. Or he would accidentally hit Chris. Well, and Lee would that run. could be a possibility, no, that, and then Lee would thing. win. That's a real thing. You're real right. Thing. You're Corey right. Could accidentally hit Chris. That's that's a run. that's a wild card. We didn't even consider. Okay. Yeah. Well, to be I'm fair, I'm, I've never been around Lee Livesey in person. I've been around the Johnstons, um, so I I just I guess maybe he just looks bigger. Or well, just he's mean. A big, he is a big dude, but I think he's like one of them big, like awkward guys. Yeah, you know what I mean? he stays he's to still like me. He stays to himself. I, 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 think, like, I, think you, know. I think you're pretty tough. Yeah, you Bruce. scrap, Brucey. Okay, well, I'll fight Lee then. Um, Robertson, you got to sit this one out. <laughs> this is not wrestling. This is a street fight, and this is an honest opinion from your buddies. I'll give you an honest opinion. Because Matt Robertson versus Brandon Palinuk street fight. Oh, street fight. Not, it's like wrestling now. Not wrestling, fighting. <laughs> Man, I'm, you know what? But I'm, you could do wrestling, right? It's not like you're going to make them stand up. Yeah, no, like, street fight's street anything. Fight anyway. Street fight's anything. Like, you could have ninja swords. Well, they could do some jujitsu yeah. stuff and like he, choke them out, right? He, he could. But Matt has Chinese throwing stars. I'm taking Paul in. In a street fight, though? I. You know what? Uh, no foreign uh, object. Matt, 30, no dude, foreign Matt object. had the reindeer in the ear. Matt blew up a reindeer. I think Paul Nick would like double leg him before Matt could even throw a punch at him. Yeah. Mm hmm. Paul Nick quick. Yeah, so Matt's still in Like, Matt I would him. fight. Like, nah, I can't. I would fight Paul Nick for real, too. Like, like I think if you punch. I know. Paul that's Nick, not the question. I, we know you would. Like you, you might not get one on him. Yeah, I mean Matt's dirty. That's the only thing. Like so, if but if, if but Palinik is very agile and uh, and, and competitive, he's not going to want to lose. Structured. I'm taking Palinik. I'm going yeah. Matt. Taking Matt. Okay. I really am in the street fight, not wrestling, because Matt. I know Palinik knows more moves than him. Yeah. Well, that was my only game. That was a straight cast game. I liked it. It was good. <laughs> Can we do F. Mary Kill now? Hi, Bracey. Can I ask you one? <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, Barbara Walters, and your mom? They would win in a straight fight. You or Gus? Me or Gussie? Yeah. Me. No doubt. Gussie yeah, ain't got a little bit of main inning. Hey, I will tell you a story, though. Um, oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, God, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. So one of our buddies has, like, a little home gym in his house our buddy chad and uh we go for wing nights every once in a while and crush a bunch of chicken wings and uh a few sociables so we go back to chad's and see his little crossfit home gym and he's got he's only got 135 pounds on the squat rack and um some of us had had a few more sociables than gussie he was he was driving he lives out of town so he you know he's got to be responsible yeah so this guy who's got a gym in his house is on the same level as me a, a couple deep and uh picks up this 135 pound on a you know on a barbell and goes to do like a clean and press like a little you know yeah. you flip it up to your chest and then put it above your head like your hollywood hogan so he goes and does it and he falls backwards oh shit oh. yeah yeah so you know i'm laughing at him he's laughing and gussie picks it up and does it like a boss so whatever no big deal we go back there an hour and a half later after you know a few more sociables a little more diesel in our diet this time. <laughs> and uh, everyone else came out with us this time. You know, uh, uh, the girls that were there and, and just uh, more of a party was accruing. Yeah. And so they all came out to the garage. Gusty goes right to the rack and does this, this clean and press. And he's sober as a judge, so I don't know why he's doing it. So he goes, does his little show off, it hammers it, no problem. He's got calves like, you know, softballs. He's, you know, he's, he's built well. Yeah. So I'm, you know, six and a half feet tall, 250 pounds. I should be able to lift this damn thing. So I pick it up and I'm, I'm like, I built like an orange on a damn toothpick, by the way, <laughs> really top heavy. And yeah. I, I grab this damn thing, pull it up to my chest. 
I fall backwards, smash my head on a weight rack, blood's gushing out of my head. So Gussie was the power lifting champion for, yeah, for weeks. Told every single person he could. So yeah, he, he beat me at crossfitting, but I'll, uh, I'll whip his ass in a street fight. <laughs> Gussie's got legs like tree trunks. He does. Yeah. yeah. He's from a family of athletes. Yeah. I, you know, I got my one win against Gus in wrestling, right? Uh, oh, 100%. Did you? Yeah. Did he say? Oh, yeah. At Top Golf, 100%. I, I saw him lose to him, though. Well, anyone could beat him at golfing, if that's he, what you're talking about. <laughs> no, no, 100%. I got my one win in wrestling against Gus. And I will tell you, I was sitting there eating dinner. And, uh, saying to cooper and i had some mashed potatoes on my fork Gus walks up behind me never put my fork down put me in a headlock choked me and they counted <laughs> it as a loss i never set my fork down with my mashed potatoes street fight mm, that's a power that's move i know so when's a rematch uh Gus is too nice i can't wrestle Gus. yeah you might not be thinking that after the next question uh-oh where were you born, Matt? <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, I was born <laughs> in San Diego, California. <laughs> San Francisco, <laughs> California. That's where the blonde hair comes from. How long did you live there for? I lived there until I was nine or ten. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the public knows this, bud. <laughs> and then I moved to Kentucky. Whenever I moved to Kentucky, I had this uh, California accent. And, <laughs> like, I was this little blonde headed surf kid, man, and I, I brought yeah. it out. So, I was a good looking little SOB. I yeah. Long blonde hair. God Almighty, son. <laughs> he loved him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he told me that, and I, uh, I was shocked. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. California See? dreaming. Yeah. California dreaming. That explains some things. Yeah. Yeah. As, so you got the swim baits in your blood from California. Yeah. yeah. My my dad actually still lives out there. Cool. Yeah. All right. So you're not straight Kentucky. Um <laughs> Oh, oh, my. Oh, my God. You see I, how happy he was about I, that? Like, he doesn't like it. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty straight Kentucky, pal. <laughs> you're saying you're not all Kentucky. Okay, last last question uh, for Matt and Matt only. Who's more country, Casey Ashley or Gerald Swindle? Oh, more country. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a tough one, man. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to say, oh, dude, that's so tough. Like, Gerald acts, I don't know, man. Casey can sing country music better. Caleb's style. more country. I'd have to say Casey's probably a little, I don't know. Caleb Summerall. Casey's got that country song. Do you he listen does, to that? Man. He's killer on the country. Mm -hmm. I'd have to go with the draw on them too, bud. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to go with the draw. Okay. All right. Well, that's a decent answer. Do you, uh, are you any good at singing or what's no, the I word there? I can't sing. I know Pat can. Oh, well, Matt sings good. I do not sing. Matt's good. He's lying, Gracie. Don't listen to that. Pat can, can sing sing anything, like literally anything, but I can't sing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No country songs coming out then. Oh boy. We could do one. So Matt's from California. <laughs> I like that. You got that California and Kentucky, the best of both worlds. Yeah. He's yeah, east coast, west coast. How'd you guys all meet? Are you guys like powering? Because you you all have the same hair. You're pretty much all equally far apart, right? You're all like 500 miles apart kind of thing mm -hmm. maybe yeah yeah i think so and yeah. you're and it's pretty much in a straight line across the center of the country we all went to the same schools at different times and that's where we met 
That's not true. That is not even close to true. I was on a train and I had an album under my uh, my. Uh, it was a Muddy Waters album. It was under my arm and it said Rolling Stone. And then Matt was like, "Hey, let's get a band together." And Seth was like, "Yeah, we'll call it the Rolling Stones." And then the rest is history. I think that's Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the real story? <laughs> the only part I remember is the creek with all the third good looking women. Yes. And that was Biodome. They thought I turned into a frog. Yeah. <laughs> what was the question again? No, uh, me and Seth, I become Seth with friends of Seth a couple years before. Um, before I qualified for the leads and then yep. I qualified for my, I won the Bass Nation team trail and I think I met Pat. Did that meet you through Seth? Or did Seth get you in touch with me or? No, I can't, no, I can't remember actually how. We you, actually. Oh no, you, you, we met at the Classic, I think briefly. Oh, I met him uh, at Ike Live. At the at my first class. Yes, yes. I uh, met him on iCloud. It, it, that's exactly he it. Was I, I he was, was hosting iCloud. Yeah, it was iCloud or Bass U or one of them, yeah, and you yeah, were on. That's that's, that's exactly it. And uh, nice. and then we had just we hit it off, and we'd always make plans. I wanted to go. I love Kentucky Lake, yeah. and I always wanted to go fishing there. And uh, it happened to be I was rolling south, I think, and I'm like, hey, Matt, I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, I was going to South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Is what I was going to say. <laughs> And uh, I was like, hey, I'm going to slide through that way. And he's like, well, Seth's going to be here, too. And then we just all yeah. went fish. Of course, I knew Seth before before that, but that's the uh, first time the three of us went fishing together. Yeah. Yeah. That's when he started yeah. the hair band. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah. Pretty that's much. <laughs> Matt thinks every band is Journey, by the way. If you ever turn on the radio and say, what band is that? Matt says it's Journey. I don't know anybody. <laughs> yeah. You just get to work. Pat used to, uh, you used to be on a radio, right? Like a radio station. I did. I did what you do right now, a bass fishing show on the radio. Yeah. You didn't like do any disc jockeying before. Well, or I anything? did that too. Yeah, I had a show called Saturday Night Drive in the mm-hmm. evening, but I got fired from that one real quick because I used to let anybody in. You know, I'd be the DJ that you know I'd use that to my advantage. You know what I mean, Brucey? You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, come on over to the radio station, ladies. You know what I'm saying? And I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's kind of like that. But I did the so I on a Saturday morning, I did the Bass Buzz radio from six in the morning till nine in the morning, three hours national radio show. Then I would come back nine to midnight on Saturdays and do the Saturday night drive. That's a lot of bass. Three hours of bass and live on a yeah, and radio. then the Saturday night drive was spinning music and yeah. talk. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's where I got my first FCC fine. But I can't talk about that because I'll be canceled. Into the- <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have all gotten in a little bit of trouble at some point. I'm going to tell what? you, it seems like if you ain't getting fired from jobs, I don't know if you're going to make it. I got fired from the radio station and look where it brought us. The Seth's basement. I got fired from <laughs> a bowling ball factory. I got fired from <laughs> <laughs> you should have hung on to that one that sounds like a dream job yeah. and this has been get the net with jamie bruce and pat robertson <laughs> I've been fired hey. yeah i've been fired a bunch at least half a dozen times pulling ball factors <laughs> yeah. That's part part you would only put one hole in it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's one hole what's this hole for i was smart i was i was not a good employee i was a smart ass punk yeah what'd you get actually get fired for is it a good story or just like negligent negligent you didn't take you didn't put pride in your bowling balls no i was was a i was a machinist there and uh yeah, man, I was just, it was my mouth. I was a young dude. I yep. still run my mouth. You are, everybody already knows that. And yep. yeah, I was just in a work environment. I was pissed off at the world, you know, uh, young and dumb. And uh, yeah, but it worked out good. Like, 
Every job I lost, uh, everything happens for a reason. Every time I got fired, I come out ahead. So, you know, I can't really say nothing bad about getting fired. I'm not telling people to go get fired, but I'm saying you'll come out ahead if you do. <laughs> so you are telling people to get historically, fired. <laughs> historically speaking, yes. what I'm saying, I don't need to get fired now, but, <laughs> but in the past. Ever... Hopefully Mr. Ugly Stick's not listening. Right? Okay, so... Get fired earlier in life and not later in life. Correct. So that, that's right. that's the uh, tip of the week. Sure. Tip of the week. Huh. Well, I only got fired once, and it was from uh, – I used to guide up north at a fishing lodge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't count as a firing. It's more of like a not allowed on the property and never come back kind of deal. Because yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's seasonal. It's seasonal. Order. <laughs> so I was just a kid, and, you know, we used to go and catch a bunch of fish, and – I got some meat hunters on the, my last trip of the year and they wanted their limits of everything. So that's walleye, pike, perch, lake trout, keeping all of them. And that's a lot of critters. And I had a little pump hole for bass and they wanted to switch it up. So we went and whaled on some smallmouth. I had a little derby spot and uh, they, were, they were insistent that we keep them to eat. Oh, and I was like, I just made up a bunch of like slot sizes that didn't actually exist. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, like sure shit the next day they had read the rags and they were like ready to keep them and i was you know i was 17 years old i didn't want to like i was like okay whatever i'm not going to get in a confrontation with these guys i need their i need their hundred dollar tip at the end of the day or whatever so they uh you know they took it upon themselves to keep these bass through them live well i kept them upright fish care was at the absolute peak that day at the end of the day i cleaned their 400 other fish they had and just hucked the bass back in the lake done deal exactly there you go so they they get back they're actually from chicago and they they got back and they didn't know it right away but around christmas time they pulled it out they're gonna have a nice big bass fry for christmas what? so it was in this big uh like you know i don't know maybe boxing day i don't know i don't know that you know the i don't know how it works there Pat. but they they put they pulled all these uh all these critters out you know it was pike lake trout wall and they're like well where the hell are the bass and they called the owner and the owner uh you know, freaked out and said I wasn't allowed to come back. That was that was my big firing. You find out what that family is, and I'll take care of them. Okay. okay. The bass keepers. You keep them out of your ditches. They'll they'll be detrimental to them. Yeah, that that they'll grow a third eye. Yeah, well, the no, boxing day bass boil. They take it serious. Yeah, I know some people. I'll just send some people over to their house. You you call them and find out who that was. Not necessarily for eating the bass, but more or less for causing you troubles but again well, it like, it, 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 like like matt said if you get yeah. fired it just works out well. yeah. <laughs> <I'm telling. laughs> what's uh what's the most trouble you ever got it like got in in the fishing game matt like i know you've had some you know some some run-ins before and maybe some compliance issues what's uh what's the big one um don't dig too deep if you're if you're worried about it we don't have to no don't have to like, I, don't, I don't know if i've really got in a whole lot of trouble i mean i've got into it with people and stuff um i just about got into a couple fights is all like nothing super bad i can say no like trouble with like getting in you know getting in trouble from the the organization or sponsors or oh what, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I said, don't don't dig too deep. Don't say anything. But this is uh, this is not a live show, so just just uh, I if, some explicit language and got fined. Uh, yeah. Didn't on the water. Oh uh, yeah. Like on live. Yeah. I okay. got fined for some explicit language. I got fined for um, my jersey. And that's about it. I've had a few talking to us about other stuff, but actually getting hammered, I got really got, yeah, I got got fined. What, uh, what was the issue with your jersey? Um, so, Nipples. yeah, it was just basically... Um, Wore the cut off the first time, and then and then the next, then the rules said you had to have sleeves, and it was basically just non-compliance with, um, you know, my uniform. No, but I mean, it, it, here's the thing: 
I knew about it going into it that I was going to get fined, so it's 100% fine. Yeah. Like, like I knew it was going to happen. It wasn't like, oh, I did this, like, and that's bullcrap. No, I, it's, it, I knew I was getting fined, so it's fine. So Was it worth it? It looked oh, worth it. Oh, yeah, it was. It was. I loved it. <laughs> People loved it. Everybody loved it. <laughs> So it's all good. Yeah. Everything yeah. The only problem now is there's a lineup of 75 women outside of your house constantly. Now you would actually be quite surprised. <laughs> 73. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's bringing the other two for frosties. What can I say? <laughs> I get to pick. And you got fired from a radio station. Oh, yeah, but I've been fired from lots of things. That's what I'm saying. Like, people who get fired from stuff, <laughs> they're headstrong, they're going to do what they want to do, and that's, you know, that's how it shakes out in the end, too. All right. Um, so the boys are heading up here this fall, Matt. We got a, it, we got a convoy fired up here. Yeah. Choder's on route. He wants to go moping. Yeah. Oh. Pat's coming. He wants to smoke peyote and go find Bigfoot. Yeah, I want to go yeah. Sam Squanchin, 100%. I was just kidding about the peyote, but I just figured that would be a required, well, uh, if, you know, if part of a sample. Hunt. If you actually want to see one, you might need some form of substance in your system. Well, I want um, to go hunt those snow leopards with Gussie. Yeah. Yeah, they're around. I know. They're actually not. Um, Seth's coming grouse hunting. That's that's yeah, his yeah. that's his pick. I might so you're, have to slip up you're there coming. With chowder. What's that? I might be slipping up there with chowder. Yeah, but what I'm saying is everyone's got their pick. Everyone's got their activity. Seth wants a grouse. Pat wants a bigfoot. Sam Squanch, if you will. Yes. Chowder wants to mope for three pound small mall. I want to kill we'll, everything. That's your goal. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to kill all the ducks, geese, anything. Like, let's put it on the list. Okay. Duck hunting. Deer hunting. No, we'll just pull the trigger. Wolf. Yeah. Oh, I do want to kill a wolf. That is for real. <laughs> I saw a big one yesterday on the highway. Really? Yeah, it just stood there. Really? Yeah. I, would, I want to see how big they actually are in person. They look like they look like they're all two hundred pounds. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. And then you, I mean, you get up to them and they're a lot more dainty. They just, they, you know, like a, I think 120 oh, yeah. pounder is like a giant one. Oh yeah. Oh, or 150. But yeah, they're, it's, you know, it's cool that they're around because they're pretty freaking creepy and there's so many of them and you hardly, you still hardly ever see them. Wow. Just trapped. Yeah. Would like yeah. to show, I'll, I'll take the wolf hunt. I know a guy too. I'm not saying I cut me a deal on it, but I do know a guy. <laughs> Yeah, you could probably get a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, just say if you beat him in the wrestling match next time, then he's got to give you a free wolf hunt. Oh, yeah. I get one even if I lose. Yeah, yeah. No, he didn't beat me. Okay, so that's that's going to be your thing. Yeah. Shoot a wolf. What if it's a werewolf? And it turns back into a man. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there could be a tagging and legality issue with a werewolf yes. in reality if you actually shoot a werewolf you're probably going to jail because that's a person <laughs> yeah damn it you maybe pat, so much fun too, Brucey. maybe pat will push sasquatch out to you and <laughs> you can shoot that and then it's a win-win we gotta bring it back alive <laughs> Oh yeah, it could be like Godzilla in Chicago. Yeah, Sam Squanch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, what's uh, what's on the cooker, fellas? You guys are going fishing tomorrow. Yeah, we're going bassing in the morning. Yeah, gonna go do a little fishing tomorrow. Take yeah. her easy tomorrow afternoon and head out Thursday morning. We got straight cast. Tomorrow yeah, straight night. cast. Tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, that's right. This will probably come out on a Monday, so this will... Yeah, we'll tell everybody to listen to this on uh, tomorrow. Yeah, and then I, when this comes out, I can tell everyone to go back five days and listen to the Straycast. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> that's how the turntables. The table. Because that'll be good. That'll be good. That's a good warm up for the boys then, eh? Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be an open forum kind of discussion. Oh yeah. We're just going to pick uh, topics and talk about them. I like that. Yeah. Looking for looking forward to that. Yeah. Throw in okay. some you, you can get back on the other side of the desk, hey? Eh? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's just going to be like it, the, these guys are going to have just as equal as a part because we're just going to pick out of a hat. So we're going to have an on them hat, and then it's yep. just going to be like we'll pick a topic, and it'll say um, thongs. And then Matt's going to talk about thongs. And his like improv. His, his G strain and his experiences with thongs. And then I'll pick it, I'll be like flipping milfoil. And Seth will talk about that. And then I'll pick another thing. Another uh, thing will be like circus animals. And then Matt will talk about circus animals. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just going to be a free for all. But it's nothing like that, but everything like that. Yeah. You know what I like better than that in, in a podcast? What? Uh, all those lame ass questions like, "What's your favorite kind of spinner bait? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite lake to go to?" Uh, well, but, you know, they, they, I, I got gotcha. you. What's your how? What's your personal best? Oh, that's not. You're not actually asking. Yeah, no, that's just one they ask. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I got him. I got him. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> you win. You win. <laughs> I've done this before. Yeah. But anyway, that's uh, that's why we like your show, Pat. And that's uh, what all the good podcasts are modeled after. So <laughs> tune into Straight Cast Wednesday night. Uh, I'll send all my 40 listeners over there that are, aren't already listening. Yeah, every one of your listeners are cool AF, though. That's why we did this show. <laughs> they are. It's true. And I bet you. Uh, I'm being serious. Yeah, I bet you the couple thousand that listen would would uh, those are the guys you want on your tug of war team yeah, and yeah. girls. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Pat, who's your favorite um, YouTuber? My favorite YouTuber? Yes, <laughs> What's wrong with you? That's one of the questions they ask on podcasts. My and I favorite figured it would YouTuber, be perfect for my, you. My favorite YouTuber is Ben Milliken. If you want to know. Okay, I like good I like Ben right now. Yeah, that's a good answer. I mo- I mostly asked that just to put you on the spot a little. No, bit. I know you. I, I know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good answer. He's great. I heard him on your Bass Buzz thing. So yeah, yeah. He's Ben's Ben's a cool Ben's just a cool dude. That's all he's doing. He's not necessarily. A, that's another show. That's wow. another show. That's another <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. Um, I hope I can get a copy of the proper bass and men, or at least watch it at some point. Maybe bring right, it up in the Sam Scan hunt. <laughs> someday, someday, many will see him. I'll, we'll I'll, have to, say. Right. <laughs> I'll have to give you like an incriminating video of me, and then you give me an incriminating video of of you know the proper bass and men, and when, then uh, and then we'll be kind yeah, of lost. We're saving this entire release for when the entire cancel culture thing goes away. Yeah. And then we know that we could just finally freely release this when we won't be canceled. I gotcha. Well, I mean, I got bad news for you because the, we're the furthest behind. This industry is the furthest behind of anything. If you look at a rating like on a movie, PG-13, uh, you could take a lot of PG-13 stuff and like throw it on live and you're getting fined. We're changing it though. Yeah, we are. That's yep. what, you know, look. I mean, the straight cast invented just the quick tip. You know, that's where you first heard it. Just the quick tip, right there. Yep. NC seventeen, right? Yeah. NC sixteen. Right. NC fifteen. I don't know what is it. I don't. What's know. the rating, Brucey? What's the Canadian rating? I don't know. All I know is uh, What's your show rated. Well, Robertson only let one F bomb go. So, like, PG? That's good. Yeah. I can show my net and then we can go to TVMA. I don't think that counts. You want to see my new tattoo? Oh. Yeah. I'm just yeah, kidding. let's see it. I'm just kidding. Oh, no. I don't want to see <laughs> that one. You done with me, guys? 
<laughs> that's a different show too. Uh, <laughs> well, was Fighter still there? No, uh, he, he, he probably sleeps. Yeah. Well, what time yeah. is it? Tell him, uh, tell him thanks for letting us use his uh, his basement. Yeah, his duck hole. It's really nice. They redid it. They did a great job. And thank you, fellas, for yeah, taking the time to hop on here. That was a blast. Yeah, it's been Absolutely. fun, Brucey. Yeah, sorry the beginning went bad. I don't know what as what our audio thing was. I hope you got that all fixed. No, non-issue, non-issue. Oh, cool, cool. It'll be all good. It's uh, the the bar's low, so we've got uh, you know. We got a bunch of beauties on here so far, and Matt will uh, come on here every day. You just call him up. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him from the water on uh, <laughs> on the St. Lawrence River. Yeah, about nine at around o'clock. two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> what are you wearing right now, Matt? Because <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot more to talk about, fellas. There's a lot more to talk about, and we can uh, talk all night. Honestly, I mean. I, I've had you for two hours already. I know you like sleeping and uh, you want to get her done here. You guys have a big day of fishing with, with Fighter tomorrow. Yeah, we're going yeah. to a sneak sneak. Wow. Yeah. Well, don't sneak too far because you'll end up north of the border and then you're into the Dummins. Oh, uh, yeah. That's but hey, the invite's always there, fellas. We appreciate it. Yeah, we'll come see you. Yeah. Okay. We will. Yeah. Okay. Joder already told me he's uh, capturing me to bring me down there. So. Yep. We'll yeah, see. we'll load up the bandwagon, fellas. Hey, thanks. So I want to tell all your uh, your listeners, though, if I may have the opportunity before we go to get a shameless sponsor plug in. Oh, so absolutely. If you sign up, yeah, you know you do those like you guys do those um, online derbs in Canada. Do they have that stuff? Yeah, they're a thing. You know, like, they're a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, they they have the half a spot thing, and half a spot's one of the partners of Stray Cash Show. And they have an online application to fish tournaments. Bank, boat, kayak, north, south, Canada, Australia, Yugoslavia, Istanbul, former Constantinople, anywhere you choose, you can sign up for this uh, half a spot app. And the grand prize, um, all said and done, you get to pick anywhere you want to go fishing in the world. But you got to take me. So, anywhere, 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 if you anywhere. Want to go to Japan, they're taking you to Japan. Yeah, anywhere you want to go. Half a spot. Download the app. Tell all your listeners. Enter the derb, the straight cast derb. I just find it. I don't know how to do it. Just go on there and click stuff, and it'll say stuff and sign up. And if you, you know, win, yeah, I'll put a win. link on here, and I'm also gonna I'm gonna rally the troops, and I'm gonna check out this derby because I want to win and drag your ass to noon of it and see how you fare up there. Yeah, but. <laughs> Let's go. And, and and it's on half a spot. We'll do it. All you got to do is win, Brucey. Okay. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to okay. look it up. Halfaspot.com like or download the half a spot app on your Android and iPhone at the uh, application store. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I like it. Halfaspotofficial.com. And how about you, Matt? You want to do a plug here? Well, you um, got the, the ear of the Canadian listeners. Yeah. yeah. Buy on them hats. On them hats and ugly stick carbons. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I like it. I like it. Thanks again, fellas. Hey, thank uh, you. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it was a blast. Best of uh, best of luck at the St. Lawrence, Matt. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow night. I'll probably come on and do a little cyber bullying on the show. Oh, I hope you oh. do. Thank you. All right, okay, fellas. Have a good night. Thanks Thank again. Take care. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Bye.